Welcome guys to your one, two, two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. We are continuing my series of looking at all the main sets in Yu-Gi-Oh! And today is uh, Force of the Breaker. Is that what this is called? <laughs> <laughs> and helping me out today is my buddy Jason because I hijacked it. He yeah, uh, he he told basically told me he just was going to do it. So I'm I'm kind of afraid of him just like a little bit. So. <laughs> Dad, blink times, you're being held hostage. <laughs> That's three times, it doesn't count. As always, we're going to try to adhere to our own set of rules where uh, cards that are on the Forbidden Limited list are towards the top of the list. Uh, bottom? Bottom. Whatever closest to one is, whatever you consider. And uh, we're going to also try to look at every card as the set came out. Uh, however, like I said in the other previous videos, we're getting more and more archetypes in the game, so it's really, really hard to be completely in a bubble. Uh, but we're going to do our best to be as objective as possible. Possible. So without further ado, here's number 10, Jason, take us away. Number 10 on our list is Field Barrier. Field Barrier is a continuous spell card that reads, Field cards cannot be destroyed by card effects, and while face up on the field, neither player can activate any more field cards. Now, it's a very basic card. It does nothing after it's on the field, but at this time, you can only have one field card out, so... Making sure your opponent couldn't play over your field card was a great way to make sure you maintain advantage. For decks that centered around their field cards, such as Tombs or Gravekeepers, this was one of the best cards you can use to help you maintain and keep advantage that you can completely wipe your opponent off the field. Number nine is Mass Hypnosis, a continuous trap card for the alien deck. The energy drink I had before recording this was a really bad idea, and I'm really jittery and weird. It's the anal probe, <laughs> really. Puts a spring in your step. <laughs> Activate only while you control a face-up alien monster. Oh, okay, sure. Select and take control of up to three monsters your opponent controls that have A counters on them. This card is destroyed during the end phase of the turn that you activate it. This card is actually really not bad. The fact that the alien deck's entire point is to place A counters on monsters on the board means that most of the time you probably actually have a viable target for this thing, and any card that, even if it is for the turn, takes control of more than one monster is still a very, very solid card. Being a spell speed 2 means you can take control of something in the middle of their combo, mess them up, and uh, just in general is a very interesting way of disruption. I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit unsure as whether you keep the monsters or not after the card is destroyed. It doesn't say that. However, uh, the ruling says that if the monster loses its A counter, you lose control of the monster. So, and if the monster is face down, you keep control of it. So it implies that because it is a continuous trap, it must be on the field for you to maintain the resolution of its effect. So once it's destroyed, presumably you give the monsters back. Although I'm not 100% sure. Feel free to yell at me in the comments about that one. But overall, just a really solid little support card for aliens. I have no idea whether or not they actually run it over, what is it, brainwashing beam? But, hey, why not? It'd be a blowout if you resolve it. And number eight, we have Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus. Like all Crystal Beasts are introduced in this archetype, they have the full effect of when they're destroyed while on the field, they get to go into the spell of Trap Cross Zone. What makes Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus unique is that whenever it is summoned, you can take another Crystal Beast, whether from your hand, deck, or graveyard, and place it in your spell and trap card zone. So with that being said, it is the ultimate combo piece to ensure that your Crystal Beast support cards can go off. You can either use the Crystal Regeki, Crystal Abundance. Sapphire Pegasus is a natural stable in any Crystal Beast deck at a minimum of two to three because it can search, find, and place all the Crystal Beasts when you want it. And on a personal note here, I'm going to say that the Crystal Beast deck was probably the one of few decks that was hot garbage, but they gave it to an American and actually made it work. You know, I, I play a little hard because truth be told, Crystal Beast was a very slow archetype that I really didn't see hit the potential where it should. But overall at this time in GX, and now even in Duel Links, you can actually make it a little bit more worthwhile. Number seven is Prometheus, the King of Shadows. Uh, of all the king monsters, the three of them that came out in this set, Prometheus is probably the most versatile. The other ones require a little bit more setup and they're just not as easy to summon because he's a level four, but uh, he's nothing remarkable. As level four Dark Fiend, he has the following ability that when he is normal summoned, you can banish one or more dark monsters from your graveyard. He gains 400 attack for each one until the end of the turn. Presumably, if you're playing a deck with a ton of dark monsters and like zombies or burning abyss or something, and you milled a bunch to the graveyard, Yard, you can normal summon this thing for a giant beat stick. Is Talk that penis? <laughs> is that good? No, 
<laughs> but it's a GX set, so the, the, the top five in these have always, are always going to be a little rough. But he's not awful. I, I kind of like him. He might be a cheesy card once we get him in, like, Duel Links. Is this in Duel Links yet? Probably nope. not. He might actually see playing something like that, where a big beat stick is a viable option. Next on our list is Sky Scorch Norlist. Sky Scorch Norlist reads, banish one light fairy and three dark fiend monsters special on this monster. <laughs> Once per turn... Why are you standing there like a damn Allstate commercial? <laughs> you just can't help. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Allstate. <laughs> are you in good hands? <laughs> that was pretty good. Damn it, Dave. Ah! Next up is Sky Scorch Norlist. Ah! <laughs> Sky Scourge Noralis, who reads banish one light fairy monster and three dark fiend monsters to special summon this card from your hand. While on the field, you pay 1,000 life points in order to send all cards from both players' hands and field to the graveyard. In addition, you get to draw one card. Now, this is pretty much a baby version of everyone's favorite banned card in its original power. It's Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. But at the time when it was banned, this is what we got that was still pretty much legal. All the Sky Scourge just pretty much act like miniature versions of popular cards. So with its summoning condition being very high, a lot of people figured out a ways to go around it by using the Dark Fiend level four monster called Phantom of Chaos. By banishing it from the graveyard, you can then copy its effect and then use it for your own pure advantage. Number five is Volcanic Rocket. Volcanic Rocket is a level four pyro fire monster that says when it is summoned, which is awesome because it doesn't matter how you got it out of the field as long as it's a summon, add one Blaze Accelerator card from your graveyard or deck to your hand. If anyone knows how volcanics work, you need your Blaze Accelerators to pretty much do anything, and that's how they ever got that new trap card, which I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. They became a decent little splashable engine. Now you could make an argument for Scattershot also being this spot on the list because it's a board nuke and it does a little bit of burn damage. However, Volcanic Rocket is much more important for the deck because it gets your play started. Plus, it's actually being a 1900 beater isn't the worst thing in the world. Number four, Gravekeeper's Commandant. Gravekeeper's Commandant was part of the set of monsters who were very good at being terraformers for specific cards. Gravekeeper's Commandant brought out Necker Valley, which hands down, in my view, is one of the best field cards ever created. It was so good that they only did Erratus to make it even better. With a little 1600 attack, it's not too special in itself. You pretty much only want to use it for the effect of searching your Necro Valley. So whether or not you want Necro Valley or not, if you want Harpy's, uh, Harpy's Hunting Ground, you got the Harpy's Queen. If you want Skyscraper, you got Captain Gold. If you want Pandemonium, you can choose the Archfiend one. Commander. <laughs> Archfiend Commander, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you want your uh, Sanctuary in the Sky? They're all Zorada. Zorada? Zorada? The green dude. Yeah, you know. And there's the one that also gets the uh, legendary Umi. Umi. No, legendary warrior, Ocean. Legendary Ocean, which is your Warrior of Atlantis. Why do you know that one, but not the... The one for... Who the fuck plays Archfiends? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> like I said, at the time where if you didn't want to just use the terraforming, having six different cards that can search out your field card was highly important to most strategies at this time. It's also probably should mention that because you're discarding a monster to search the field spell, you're kind of giving yourself a little graveyard setup as well. Oh man, you're gonna edit the shit out of that way. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Number three is Recurring Nightmare. Recurring Nightmare is a normal spell card that reads, target two dark monsters in your graveyard with zero defense, add those cards to your hand. Uh, basically, this card is just a really solid plus one. Um, it's good. That is so dull. You're dull. <laughs> Come on, giant orbs you can bring back. You know, if you got Oh, some giant orb. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> so there's a lot of synergy with dark decks that this card can help. It's a plus one. Do you want to do this one? <laughs> Talk about the stupid spell card. <laughs> See, Reoccurring Nightmare has a lot of synergy because a lot of dark monsters with built-in themes have very low, pretty much zero defense. Okay, so whether you're trying to get a beater out like Giant Orc, or you're trying to recur some of the uh, newer vampire monsters out there, or even a lot of zombie monsters in particular to cycle out through your hand, Reoccurring Nightmare is one of those cards you need pretty much mid-game to make sure that you maintain an advantage. So number two on our list is Rise of the Storm Monarch. Now, like all Monarch cards, 
he gets his effect when Tribute Summoned. Whenever he is Tribute Summoned, he gets to target any card on the field and spin it back to the deck, which solves a lot of problems with any monsters that if you remove them can either float or add some type of effect because we all know you cannot activate effects in the deck. It's also a top deck, so if you top deck something that was hard for them to summon, it's like a brick next turn. Very much so. Thank you, Dave. Mm. <laughs> so with Ryza's stats being at 2,400, it's a solid beater. Once you tribute it out, getting over it ain't going to be that easy. And like all Monarchs, once you get them, you just swing for game. All right. Uh, it was really hard when we were making this list to get to 10 again, so we ended up not really having any honorable mentions. If you really wanted one, scatter shot. Why not? However, we definitely have a dishonorable mention this time around, and it's a card I had never heard of before, and uh, it's a stinker. Soul of Fire. It's got a cool name. I guess That's about it. I guess about it. Soul of Fire is a normal spell card that reads, your opponent draws one card. That's it, it sucks. That's it, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else after that point does not help you. Ooh, it, it would have to say, win the duel <laughs> for that to be worth it. Select one pyrotype monster from your deck, banish it, and your opponent takes effect damage equal to half of that monster's original attack, and then you can't do your battle phase this turn. Ho <laughs> ho! You mean your opponent gets to draw a card and you get to burn them for at most like 1500 damage. Woohoo! Oh, and you can't attack. Nothing like, uh, nothing like taking that good old neg too. Oh boy, they're here. <laughs> That's not me. I mean, I guess if uh, Blaster was a Pyro, then there'd be some silly synergy with a card like that, but he's a dragon. Well, in any game that you can technically win by using Ga 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 Cowboy, you can win using that spell card. That's very specific. You Cowboy's go good because he's in your extra deck, you can get him when you want. This thing you have to hard draw. No, you don't. No, you hard draw the spell card, but you don't from your deck, so. It's bad. I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> at I'm saying it's At so best, good. it's a weird way to search a card, but it. Oh. And before we get to number one, as always, my sponsor for this video is Matamats. If you guys want a custom cloth playmat, just go over to their website, use my promo code TROLLTHEMETA, and you'll get like 10% off. It helps the channel, helps them, and uh, if you actually want to help protect your cards, it's the only thing to do. I love me some Matamats. So much, he rubs it on his nipples. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my sponsorship for that one. Well, don't put it in. <laughs> I'm probably still gonna put All it in. All the homo. <laughs> All the homo. And number one is the only card in this set that's on the Forbidden Limited list. However, I think it would be number one anyway. Eradicator Epidemic Virus! Woo! Eradicator Epidemic Virus is a normal trap card that reads, Tribute one dark monster with 2,500 attack. Declare spell or trap. Then you get to look at all cards in your opponent's hand, all cards on their field, and any card they draw for the next three turns until the end of the third turn after this card is activated, and destroy any cards of that declared type. Against certain decks like, I don't know, uh, Alter Geists, and you called Trap, or Spell Strikers, and you called Spell, you pretty much won that duel outright, because it's just an absolute blowout against any deck that relies on one of these two card types in order to function properly. Unlike Crush Card or Deck Devastation, which kills monsters, Spells and Traps are a lot harder to recur, so they are pretty much dead when they're dead. And even if the deck doesn't completely rely on only spells or only traps like the two decks I mentioned, just sometimes, uh, if they have any good spells in their deck or any good traps, it's just enough to put the, de the, the duel in your favor by shutting off maybe a quarter of their options. Overall, the card is just absolutely disgusting, and when you combo with Layer of Darkness, you get to tribute one of your opponent's guys for it. That's super silly. That's super. It's freaking awesome. Can we give him, like, a Raiden or something? <laughs> Kaiju. Overall, the card is just absolutely disgusting, and uh, I would love to see it at more than one, just because it's much more reliable. I love this card. But anyway, guys, that was Force of the Breaker. Thank you, Jason, for helping me out with this set. Uh, it's I, okay, I hijacked you. No, it's alright, I was very uninvested. <laughs> <laughs> I want GX to end. GX was the test, come on, we know it was so close. We are so close to 5Ds. Didn't you quit around 5Ds? It wasn't that great. There's some cool cards with 5 these. <laughs> anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think in regards to Vino Troll the Meadow Who Will. I will see you guys 
for what's the next set? Do you know? The next set is Tactical Evolution. I'm looking at your phone at the same time. It, it introduced Gemini monsters. Good thing we got those. I think chem critters are cool, I guess. Chem critters are dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.